I learned about self-directed IRAs at 23. So I learned about a concept that people can use their retirement money to invest in real estate. They lent me $60,000 from their IRA to flip my first deal. And so that was my first deal was with someone's IRA. I put $0 into it. I made uh, four or $5,000 in that flip, which I was pumped about. The investor made $12,000. I gave them 75% of the profits of the deal in a 90 day period. And it all went back to the client's IRA. And after that, the client obviously uh, did a few more deals with me. I would have borrowed from you all day long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can do wholesaling from a self-directed IRA, can't you? You can. There's a lot of people that do that. Because I would say that's one of the things that people will say, well, I don't know if I can self-direct because I don't have enough money. Well, that's a perfect asset class. People that say it's not about the money, it's people who have money. Right. You know what I mean? Like I have a little more money now. So now I'm like, hey, look, it's about quality time with my family. I couldn't say that when I was 23 years old. You guys know I do infinite banking like crazy. I've got 15 policies, which is just nuts. When I stop and think about it, my 16 year old daughter, we used one to buy her her first car. If she misses a payment, I'm taking the fucking car. <laughs> Here's where the mindset is, it, it shifts, is like, why would you ever miss a payment? Because that 446 bucks, she's not losing control of it. Like we talked about, all That's about right. control. Right. That 446 goes back into a policy and builds up that she can use again and again and again and again. Why would you ever miss a payment to yourself? This is the Mr. Burr Show. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Today is an exciting episode that's actually live on YouTube right now. This is the first time ever on the Mr. Burr Show. We'll see how it goes. So if you guys are watching this live, make sure to ask questions. I have someone on who has lent over a billion dollars. That is with a B, a billion dollars in real estate. He's done a ton of flips himself. I believe over 500. He's done commercial real estate. He actually, his main business is helping people use non-traditional methods of lending. So kind of using things that you might not know about that have been around for a very long time. We're talking about since the 1970s. He helps clients do this and really save up for retirement in a big, big way. Tax-free, potentially growing tax-free and also using it tax-free. So we're going to get into all of his ninja moves when it comes to finances, lending, how he's crushed it over the years. And you guys are going to get a ton of value from it. When you do, if you are not subscribed to my channel, make sure to do that. Hit the bell, hit the like button, throw your comments, all that stuff so we can help more people. Without further ado, Greg Herlean. Welcome to the show, brother. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the intro. I appreciate it. Of course, brother. Of course. So let's tell the people kind of just how you got into real estate. First of all, I know it was way back when. Um, you and I are about the same age and it's crazy. I'm about to be 40. I think you're what? 43, 46 this week. Yeah. I turned 46, 46 last week. Yeah. Yeah. A few more years. Happy, on happy belated. Well, you don't look 46, so that's good news. <laughs> Thank you. Well, go. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I started when I was 23, really when I started you know, getting into real estate. Yeah. How'd you do it? So, so look, but for me, it was all about my why. I had no distractions. Uh, I dropped out of school needing to, I was going to get married and I had to make money. And, and so, so for me, I, I'll never forget. It was, it was, there was a time I had, I had, it was right before I dropped out of school. It's actually what kind of helped me drop out of school. I, I was visiting my parents for the weekend and I drive by this uh, guy's house and, and I was with a friend and it's his dad, uh, and well, her dad and her dad's outside on a Wednesday at two o'clock washing his boat. Things I'd never seen before in front of this big house, right? My dad at home on a Wednesday at two o'clock, never have I seen that ever. Uh, and a big old boat and this lifestyle that I've only seen on TV. And so I remember distinctively, I was like, whatever he's doing. Like I, I've got to figure that out because that's the lifestyle I want. And I wanted to be home with my kids. So that that's kind of where it started. And, and I, I actually ended up within months started working for him as pretty much an intern. He didn't pay me really anything, which was fine. Uh, but I, that's when I learned about real estate. And that's when I was like, I'm going to be a real estate investor. I'm going to figure out how to make money in real estate because it's going to create freedom. So 
that I jumped right into it at 23. I know a couple years probably later than, you know, my oldest son, he started even younger than me and um, his, and his journey. But, uh, I started young cause I, it was, it was all about my why and, and, and that's what got me started so long ago. That's amazing, man. So yeah, your, your son, Carson, he's what, 21. He just turned 22 last week too. Yeah. Just insane, man. And he started what at, uh, 19. I think he started like at 20, like two years. It's been like two years. Yeah. That's an, that's insane. And he's, he's crushing it. He's doing really, really well. Uh, I'm trying to be like him with my hair, get the, get the flow going. You know, <laughs> I know I have noticed you're usually wearing a hat, by the way, it looks good. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm growing the hair out when, when the hair grows out, it gets curly. So growing it out, <laughs> seeing what I can do with it, get some flow going. Uh, I'm trying to be like Carson Hurleen, <laughs> but um, yeah, man. So starting young. Um, that's, that's incredible. I started real estate at 34, so I can't imagine starting at 23. Um, tell people kind of the struggles that happen. Cause I think a lot of times people think it's just all sunshine and rainbows. They see someone like you and they're like, man, this guy's done a billion dollars in lending, a lot of money has all these flips as his business with, which we'll get into with like self-directing IRAs and such. But Let's talk about real quick the the struggles you went through as a twenty three year old real estate investor. Uh, look, there's <laughs> I feel like I've I've lived a whole lifetime in the last like twenty years, and I still got a lifetime ahead of me. But the the first like the first I'd say most difficult things probably more in my head now that I've, I've gone through this. But it was that I was so young trying to convince people that they should partner with me and work with me on real estate deals. Right. I mean, who I, I would, I would almost walk in the room knowing I had to build relationships, but also doubting myself. Like, why would this person who's 20 years, 30 years older than me partner with me or invest with me? And so, uh, part of it was true though. I do, I do feel like, you know, my lack of experience and how young I was, it, it was a little harder to, to get people, you know, going and telling someone they should invest with me in real estate. Cause I know real estate telling, you know, a 50 year old who'd already bought and sold five or 10 homes, you know, that they probably had low confidence in my ability. And so, so did I a little bit, right. right? I would, I was a little bit faking it to make it. That concept it kind of rung true with me for sure in the beginning. Uh, but that was a hard one, uh, overcoming kind of the young age, overcoming, not having money. That was probably the hardest thing is no, a bank wouldn't lend me money. I had no family money, no friends with money. And so, so finding money and, and building relationships was, was critical. And so that was probably one of the biggest hurdles, you know, and then, and then, you know, shortly thereafter, after I started building relationships and finding money and, and doing some deals, you, you know, now you're, let's say I'm 25 feeling like, you know, I'm the man, but realistically I hadn't really failed yet. Right. And, and many of those things came year after year and in small ones, right? Some, a couple big ones, 2008 happened to everybody, but, uh, but, but failures like, you know, just trusting what people say, like, you know, if someone says they're going to do X, a contractor, right. Or a deal or, a, and you got a con, you know, whatever you got terms and agreement and, and they have experience, then all of a sudden they take off with your money or they, they don't do the job. They do a subpar. I mean, those kind of big hits on a person who's, you know, in 2000, when I, when I was 23, that, that first year I made $23,000. It felt really good. I mean, I know it wasn't like life changing, but it, but it, I was proving a concept. I mean, 23, right? Back then that was probably like $50,000. But uh, the next year I made like $50,000 in my second year. And so, so I was, I was pretty dang confident, but when you take a loss on a deal of 10 or 15, $20,000, it, it's painful. <laughs> so, so, you know, learning who to work with, how to work with them, learning about money. Uh, I think that was the most pivotal and critical thing I learned at a young age. I learned so much about money and, and, and still learning today, by the way, I feel like you and Carson still teach me things about, you know, IBC from a money perspective and banking perspective. But at that young age, I took a focus on money, how it works, what people are looking for, how to invest it, why would they invest with me, what the angles were. 
and lending institutions. So that's where I focused was was money because I, I wasn't around it. And I felt like I needed a hatter to do deals. So that that's kind of where it all started. It always amazes me, man, how um, people don't talk about money. It's not like it's taboo, right? Families don't sit down and talk about money at the dinner table when last time I checked, you kind of need money for anything you do in life, right? It's kind of important. It's kind of important. So I make it a point to talk about it a lot. And I'm sure you do as well, which is why Carson does so well. Um, because it's he's got that mindset that, dude, I need this stuff. And he grew up seeing the lifestyle you've got. And he probably wanted to emulate it and have the same kind of lifestyle, right? Yeah, and or bigger. I mean, he gives me shit sometimes, right? And he's like, he's like, Dad, it's you know, you can make more. It's like, uh, okay, son. Uh, but 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 one thing I was going to mention is because you said that I, I think it's it's funny. It's it's like the tabooness of of, of money. Uh, I remember being really frustrated with it uh, early, especially early on when people were like it's not about the money. It's about you know your time and who you work with and who you are, and all true. I find myself saying a lot now, but I'd often like to call BS on that because people that say it's not about the money, uh, it's people who have money. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like, so like I, I have a little more money now. So now I'm like, Hey, look, it's about quality time with my family. I could, I couldn't say that when I was 23 years old. I mean, I was dreaming it. It was my why, but I wasn't necessarily living it. And so I, I do want to put out some of those myths, and I think that's a little bit taboo. It's not all about the money. You're right; it's not right. End of the day, we know it's it, it is about love and relationships, and you know, and and being a good person. But it, it's you need to create wealth. You need to create money, even if it's not wealth, just money to create your why or have your why. And so I, I do want to preface that because because that's like someone who comes to me and so I'm going on a tangent on this because I'm reminded by like these celebrity uh, real estate. Uh, people that are on TV that I've worked with that you, you see them flipping homes and I've had many dinners with them. Sorry, total tangent, but he made me think about this. I love it. Is, I love it. Is, is, is I remember being at the wind at the SW steakhouse. I'm sitting, I'm not going to name any of them because they're, they're widely known and, and they're talking about success and the students and the people that they're teaching about success in real estate. And the, and, and I'm the money guy, right? And it kind of boring to them. They like, they like the pictures, the before and afters and success and the TV, you know, like, you know, I get it, you know, that whatever. And so then they said something like this. They said, Hey, they said, it's really not about the money. It's about finding the right deal. And it kind of hit a, a chord with me. Cause I was like, okay, you're saying that now because you are a celebrity Right now, if you were to say, I've got a deal, everyone, the money's coming in. But I, so I cut them off and I said, Hey, the people that you're teaching and coaching about real estate, you were there once. Like, like, you know, I, I'm not going to say the name, but tell me, tell me about your first deal that you did. Was money just there? Was money just available? And, and, and I caught him off guard and, and, and he's like, You know, you're right. You're right. The first couple of deals, it is, you know, so, so I, I take it serious when it, it, there is a lot about finding the money, understanding money, and I don't take it lightly. It's a lot of hard work and, and people that think they can just, you know, be a good person, uh, or, you know, spend quality time with their kids and then they're going to build wealth. Good luck. Uh, people that think they're just going to find a cool deal and post it on social media and get funding. Uh, it takes more than that. So sorry, that that's my soapbox, uh. Uh, tangent no dude i agree 100 percent. it's not about the money but it kind of is like yeah money is a tool to do what you need to do in life it can it, it solves problems right for example i have a problem doing yard work i don't want to do it that's a problem i don't like to do yard work right that is a problem if i make enough money to pay someone to do it where the cost to pay them per hour is less than what I can make if I work, why would I ever do it myself? I can pay them less than what I can make during that time. That is a tool to solve that problem. So it's not all about the money. 
but it kind of is. The more you have, the more you can solve problems. And, and, the, and the more time you get back, which is what, that's the most valuable asset is time. And so the more money you have, the more time that you get back. Uh, and I'll share my example on that one. The yard work's a great one. You can apply that to anything. I remember as a small business owner, uh, two and a half years into my, my business, uh, I made at that point, you know, it was 23 and then like 50. And then I don't know, I was going to make about $75,000 the, the third year. I decided I was enough hire a full-time person to be, you know, support me in the business. And she was going to cost like thirty six, thirty seven thousand dollars $37,000 of what I was going to make. I mean, I, but, but I also had on my, on my sheet, my goals, my financial goals. Here's what I got to hit. And there was no way I was going to do it by myself. I was like, all right, I'm going to gamble, risk, give up potentially half of what I'm going to make this year, thinking that I'm not going to be one and a half of me or two of me or hopefully three or four of me. And I did the next year, I went to like 140 and so it paid off. But, but, but to your point, you know, uh, you know, paying people to do a lot of the little things that, that, that take away time that where you create more success and, and whatever that is that you, you said. So, yeah, that's, that's a good example. Or, or the time with family, to your point, right? That's right. Like, I've got a, a new daughter, as do, do you. Um, we can kind of get into how you had a daughter because it's a controversial thing that my wife doesn't want to do. But um, I really want to have a boy like this next time, but we, we'll talk about that. Um, anyways, so <laughs> let's talk about like when you got into real estate, you didn't have money. You didn't come from money, right? You didn't have just a, a big bank account where you could go use that to flip a house. Like, how did you get money for your first deal? So my first deal was, came out of, after I met this individual, I, I, I started talk, telling you about, I would, I sat in a lot of his um, client meetings and I would take notes for him. So I get to hear how he speak to them and how, what, you know, just about money and what they're looking for. And, and I learned about self-directed IRAs at 23. So I learned about a concept that people can use their retirement money to invest in real estate. So uh, I then went to an event, just, you know, I was, a, I was trying to seep it all in, anything I could get. So I went to an event that weekend in Vegas and someone was talking about self-directing as well. So now it clicked with me. I heard it in real life example with this individual, then I heard it at an event. And so, uh, I, and, and so I recall like my first deal that I ever did Someone with their IRA funded it. And I found that person, um, which is a, uh, I'll tell that story if that's okay. I got time to tell this story, but for sure. It, I, I, uh, I was going to set up my bank account in here in, in Nevada at, uh, at Bank of America. And I needed to have $500 to open the bank account. And so I opened up the bank account and the lady that's opened up the account asked me what I did. And this, you're right, this is my opportunity to an elevator pitch to figure out how can I tell this banker in a way that I can leverage this relationship. That's how I was thinking at 23 to help me in my business. That's all I was thinking, right? So, so what I said was I said, I, so we had a, the office that I was interning in, there was an estate planning attorney and this real estate guy that I was working with. So I said, actually, we help people with real estate this is what, what I do. I help my, my, company I work with, as well as we do estate planning. Uh, we have an estate planning attorney that does asset protection. I knew what that meant because I understood it because I sat in so many meetings. She says, without me even like asking, I just I was just putting out as much information as I could to see if anything would stick. She says, oh, I get all these clients that move in from California that have these big retirement accounts in estates, and they want uh, they need to set up a Nevada trust. Could I refer them to your estate planning attorney? Absolutely. So she started Bank of America, referred me over a couple of people. They got their trust from our estate planning attorney. It's not what I did or even pretended to do. Uh, but I got to meet those clients because I was the portal of the introduction. And the first person she introduced me to was, which was like within two days, was a retired person moving then moved to Nevada. They lent me sixty thousand dollars from their IRA to flip my first deal. And so that was my first deal was with someone's IRA. I put zero dollars into it. Uh, I made I made uh, four or five thousand dollars in that flip. 
which I was pumped about. The investor made $12,000. I gave them 75% of the profits of the deal in a 90 day period. And, and it all went back to that client's IRA. And after that, that client obviously uh, did a few more deals with me. Uh, they were really happy about it. So that, that was my borrow, first deal. I would have borrowed from you all day long. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I, I, I wouldn't do it any differently, right? Because I built a relationship now with someone who ended up lending to me to the day that he died. Uh, and and he, he became a very good, close family friend. But uh, that was my first deal. So so the long answer to your question is someone introduced to me the subject of self-directing an IRA. And I learned that people have IRAs and, and most people don't know they can use their IRA to invest in real estate. So I just learned it. I was like, this is an opportunity. I shared it with uh, the first person I could and anyone I could after that. And they started be, I found partners and you know, different relationships that would partner with me. And, and that's how I got, you know, into kind of funding. I ended up, you know, doing hundreds of deals and raising tens of millions of dollars, um, um, you know, using self-directed IRAs. Uh, and so that's, that's, that's really how I jumped into it originally. It's really impressive actually, because most people, yeah, they think of like a traditional 401k, right? Most people know you can, you can use 50% or 50 grand, whichever is the lesser, I think is what it is. Right. That's right. So most people know that and they think it's, it's really good way to, to, to use the money because then you pay yourself back with interest and it goes into that retirement account. Um, so what's the difference with a self-directed? Yeah, that's, that's a uh, so good question. So a self-directed it is more of a descriptive term of how you can invest those funds. So for example, if you're at Fidelity, Charles Schwab, Team, or well, any of these major brokerage powerhouses that most people have the retirement funds, you have a list of what you can invest in. They're marketable, governed securities that are regulated, and that's that's your that's your menu. You, you can't pick anything off that menu. Uh, it, if you have a traditional or any kind of IRA, Roth, Simple, whatever, SEP, and you move that over to a company like ours at Horizon Trust Company, we're a self-directed IRA custodian. It is still a simple SEP traditional Roth. Whatever it was there, it is with us. The same rules apply. Same contributions, distributions, all that applies. There's no difference. The only difference is the option, the menu of what you can invest in. With us, we don't make decisions on your behalf. You don't send your money to us at Horizon Trust and say, okay, Greg, invest it. In fact, we'll give you, we're not going to give you any advice. We don't get paid uh, based upon the decisions you make on where you invest it. You don't want that smoke. Don't want it. Uh, <laughs> but I would say most people that come to us are the savvy kind of entrepreneurs, real estate investors, more educated people. Most likely people are listening here today. You're taking action and trying to build unlock your bank or, or create wealth, real wealth. Uh, th these are the individuals that typically move over to us and want to take control of their money, their retirement money, which I know rings a bell with you, which is why you and I, Carson, I mean, this is why it resonates. Your message with ours is you teach the purpose of being your own bank. I mean, it says right there, become your own bank, unlocking really the money you're giving to a bank is how you talk. I say the same thing but talking about retirement accounts, we allow people to unlock your retirement funds, invest in what you know, like, and understand. And, and my message, and by the way, we've been doing this for 15 years. I would trust company 14 years, technically. This has been around, like you said, for over 40 years. This is not a new message. Yeah, it's new to most people because most people don't hear about it from their advisors. Uh, the advisors don't teach them, don't want to teach them. Uh, and this, again, a lot of sim and common similarities of what your message is and, and what our message is at Horizon Trust. So, so that's, 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 that is, you know, the, again, trying to get detail, the long answer to the question is a self-directed account is an account that sits at a custodian like ours that gives you complete flexibility. There's a few things, a, pro a few prohibited transactions that you can do. And we help you and guide you, walk you through the process, hold your hand, make it super simple. Uh, but you get to pick and choose. And that's, I think, the most important thing, the difference between where you might be, where you're at now. And and one last thing I'll say about this, and unless we go back to it again, is uh, there's there's over 100 million IRAs in the United States with over seven, $7 trillion now. 
uh, you know, 10 years ago, that was 4.7, seven trillion dollars. So over a hundred million, there, there's over, there's like 330 million Americans, a third pretty much of the population has a retirement account and in only 4% of Americans self-direct. And so, so wow. there's a huge opportunity, tons of money there. Uh, and my mission and goal is to educate first and foremost, but then help individuals, uh, go through the process of getting control of their funds. And then lastly, my hope for you is that when you start investing, you make a few percentage points more than you are now. And and I think that's the biggest like uh, let down I give people. Uh, I'm not here to say, hey, look, you're going to come over here and you're, you know, you're going to find an investment, flip it and make 20, 30, 50% of your money. You can, I have, and so do many others, but that's not the goal. That's not the message is if you're making, again, similar to your message about banking, right? And controlling your money. If you can make an extra two, three, 4% per year on your money, because you're investing in something that you understand better, that might have more collateral, better returns, but 4% over a 10, 20 year period is, is hundreds of thousands, about millions of dollars in difference. So that's, that's, that's the message. Especially if it's tax free growth, um, that's that's something that a lot of people they don't really realize is like the biggest eroder of wealth is taxes. So if if you guys kind of if this is already resonating with you and you want to um, schedule a call, it's a free consultation with with Greg's team. We're gonna put a link up here um, on the video. So make sure to click the link and just schedule a free consultation. Um, if it's not resonating yet, keep listening. So the you. <laughs> You're correct though, man. Like what we talk about with infinite banking is just having total control of your money. The more control you have, the less risk you have. So in a general retirement account, most people understand that the money goes into like a, a, a mutual fund. You've got zero control of that money until you're 59 and a half without penalty. You have no idea what that mutual fund is doing. You don't know what the fees are and all that crap. In a self-directed, to your point, it's the same exact thing. Same rules apply. Like you can't use the money until you're 59 and a half, right? Without penalty. Right. Yeah. But you have control of what it's going into. So if you can put it into something that, like you said, you know, like, and understand, you're mitigating risk. I've lost money one time on a real estate deal. I know real estate. I understand real estate. So I know how to mitigate the risks. And that one time I lost money... It was a learning experience. I'll never do what I did again on that deal. So that's the thing, guys, is you can use a self-directed for pretty much anything, right? There's some guidelines where you can't do certain investments, but take people through kind of just like something, like I know you can do this. Real estate investors, they know of wholesaling. Everyone knows what wholesaling is. And if you guys don't, it's basically just... You assign a, you, you lock up a contract on a house for a certain price point between you and the seller, then you sell your place in that contract to the end buyer, the flipper, for a fee. Now that person buys the house at the said price plus what they paid you, the fee. So you can do wholesaling from a self-directed IRA, can't you? You can. And yeah, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of people that do that and, and that understand it. And that's probably one of the because I would say that's one of the things that people will say, well, I don't know if I can self-direct because I don't have enough money. Well, that's a perfect asset class that if you started with 7,000 bucks or $5,000, uh, $1,000, and you opened up a self-directed Roth account, you could you could partner with, you could you could wholesale on your own. You could definitely do that. You could turn your $5,000 on one deal to 10 or 15 or whatever do dollars. And if it's inside a self-directed Roth, you're brand new $5,000 self-directed IRA could turn into in one on one deal, let's say per year or two, let's say two. I know you can do more than that, but let's just say you do two deals. That $5,000 easily could be turned into thirty to $50,000 in one year. So now you got $50,000 and you don't pay taxes, most likely on that full amount. Now there's, there's a few little things we help you with from potentially some tax, uh, but most likely there's no taxes on it. And that's something we work with you and, and your CPA on. You don't have to worry too much about, but this is, this is one of the best ways of getting some big returns and catching up if you feel like you're behind. And, and look, most of America is behind uh, when saving for retirement. Uh, the, I forget the average number of it. It's like 
an average 50 year old only has like $78,000 uh, saved up for retirement on average, right? That's not like the top five or 10%, but, but it's, it, there's a few little things you can do to catch up, to be more aggressive. And then for those of you who don't need to be as aggressive, you can be a little more conservative, but yeah, wholesaling is a, it's a, it's definitely a good one with the Roth. Yeah. It's super cool. Cause all you're doing guys is you're assigning the contract from the IRA. So the IRA puts in earnest money. So let's say the earnest money, I've done a deal as little as 500 bucks earnest money. <laughs> so if 500 bucks is coming from my self-directed as earnest money, and then the deal closes and let's say the assignment fee is 20 grand. Now what's coming back into my self-directed is $20,500. I just grew it by 20 grand, zero tax. Insects. That's right. And, and, and that, and that's, and that, and that, there's a the few little key things that he said that are important that we help you with. Like, like typically when someone will do a deal, their they or their LLC would be the owner, put on a contract. Instead, like like Deb said, it would be your IRA. So it'd be Horizon Trust Company, FBO, Devin Burr, and Devin Burr's Roth, right? And so uh, that would be the 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 uh, the contract buyer. And then when he flips it, all that money does not go back to Devin. It goes back into his IRA. And so that, and then you rinse and repeat, and you can do that a couple of times in a year. And so that's, that's a, a good example. Bitcoin, we got a lot of people that do Bitcoin with their IRA. That's possible. Precious metals, businesses, you know, Devin starts a new business and he's doing selling shoes. I might invest in it with my IRA and I see all your sneakers back there and uh, he can run it. I can fund it with a part of it with my IRA and then uh, in, in my IRA, then we'll get the distributions, but just kind of a, from a funny perspective, but real in this example, let's say I become a partner with him on a shoe business. He's he's buying and flipping shoes, right? So my IRA would be a partner, a passive partner. Devin would be doing the work and energy. What I couldn't do uh, is Devin couldn't give me any of the product. That would be uh, a, uh, that would blow up my retirement plan. So I could not take a pair of those shoes uh, uh, as a gift or of anything else, or use them for a day or two. I, I share that with you a little bit, Tony, so kind of just for fun is it, this applies a little bit more in real estate. So like if someone, if you were to buy a, a home, a Airbnb, but you want to use it for a week out of the 52, you can't do that because uh, your IRA is the owner of it. So, so yeah. And this is, th these are things that, uh, that your company helps with Horizon Trust, right? That's right. To make, yeah. To make, to make sure everything's compliant. And um, so that's why it makes sense to work with, you know, someone like Greg and his company. Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I'm not as experienced and knowledgeable on this stuff as you are, obviously, but the whole point of having the custodial company is because the funds from the IRA or the SEP or whatever, the self-directed, I cannot touch that money. It cannot come through my hands. If so, that's when I get penalized. So it goes through a custodial company as like a third party, correct? So it goes from the IRA to the custodial company. Custodial company puts it into the investment. And then the investment does whatever it does. It comes back to the custodial company and then back to the IRA, correct? That's right. That's exactly how it works. And so, uh, well, well, I mean, the, the IRA, your IRA in this example, uh, is held in custody of Horizon Trust. And so when your IRA, wherever it's at, is moved over to Horizon, we are the custodian of your IRA. Still your IRA, we're the custodian of it, just like a bank account, uh, Wells Fargo or wherever. So, so is it comparable uh, to like, if if it's in Fidelity right now, Fidelity is the custodial company. That's right. Custod uh, Fidelity is the custodial right. company. And so when that, so when you tell us, you Devin, you'd say, hey, send this money to title or to the whatever. We then uh, follow your, um, you know, follow your instructions as long as that we have the proper documentation. We send the money there and we send the wire there. And then when that deal pays off, it will come back to the trust company, the custodian company, and for and behalf of Devin, and it'll have your account number and say, please pay back this principal slash profit back to this account. So then we credit the 20500 back into your Roth account. And look, this happens, I mean, we, there's a thousand transactions a month that happen at Horizon Trust. I mean, there's constantly people buying and selling or have monthly cash flow checks coming in from their different investments. Uh, that go back into their IRAs. And, but this is, I mean, we got over a billion in assets and out Horizon Trust, or about 8,000 clients. We're still small. I'd say we're a boutique firm, uh, but I like that. I mean, I started this company 
uh, purely because the competition service was subpar. Uh, I did not think this was going to be my main my main Brit, uh, business, uh, and now it's it's really all that I do uh, besides spend quality time with family. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, dude. So I'm excited about my dad getting into it. So we were talking a little earlier today. My I helped my dad retire um, late last year uh, through life insurance. Funny enough, um, got him a policy in his name. I fund it from my trust, so my trust owns the policy. Those dollars, since the trust is paying them, it's a it's an expense of the trust. So it takes any taxation off the trust for funding a policy that grows tax free, and then I let him use the cash value as a retirement income that keeps going up because it never stops compounding. And then when he passes away, death benefit pays off everything I paid him. Surplus goes to my trust. That trust buys more policies on my kids tax free. Really, really cool. But love it. He retired because of that, but he had this 401k. Um, he worked at, dude, he worked in HVAC since before I was born. I was born in 1985. He started there in 1980, I think. So dude worked his ass off in Arizona, getting up on roofs in like 110 degree weather, getting up in attics where it's probably like 180. And because of retirement accounts, guys, I'm sure if you have one, you know this, they're going up, they're going up, market crashes, boom. If you lose 50%, you have to earn a hell of a lot more. You have to earn 100% just to get back to where you were. Okay. So people don't realize that like losses are huge. Warren Buffett said it best. There's two rules to investing. Rule one, never lose money. Rule two, never forget rule one. Pretty smart dude, I think. So my dad's retirement just boom, 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 going along, losing money, going up, losing money. After all these years, he's only got like 250 grand. And he's like, Son, how am I going to make this work? How am I going to keep make it stretch? I'm like, well, first get it the hell out of the markets, yeah, and self direct it. So he's going to go over to Horizon Trust. I'm going to show him kind of where to put money, how to get like a cash flow coming in, and let's talk about because here's my idea for him: is that 250? It goes into let's say like a fund where he can make, let's say 12 percent interest. So that 12% interest, my plan is to have it come back into his self-directed so it's growing tax-free. He's not going to use it because he doesn't need to. But there's an age where he has to start using it, right? Mm -hmm. So this was right. my plan. Is like, our my plan was like... Yep. Um, required, minimum, required minimum distribution, which I think now is at 72. Yep. yep. 72 and a half, maybe. He's 67. So I'm figuring five years of just letting that build up tax-free. And then start systematically bringing it out to kind of just because you have to take it out at some point so what are your thoughts about that plan that's at least what i was thinking no it's great look uh, the the calculation which we also help our clients with and and or they can use their own tax professionals to help with this but uh the required minimum distribution is a percentage of dollars you have to take out of your retirement plan per year but what's um good about that most likely, if he's earning 10 or 12% per year, uh, all you're going to do is when he turns, and again, I think it's 72 now, uh, all he's going to do is turn the interest to be paid out to him. So let's say his 250 turns into 350, okay, over the next five years. Now he's got $350,000 there. He has to take his requirement distribution. But let's just say he keeps investing what he's investing, earning 12%. He's going to get then a check every month of interest on three hundred fifty thousand of thirty five hundred dollars a month. He then could just tell us, "Hey, just send me my interest every month." So thirty five hundred dollars every single month. So the principal stays intact. Thirty five hundred comes out every month. Most likely, that will cover most of his RMD. Is pulling out. Is pulling out thirty six thousand dollars a year. Uh, call it principal or call it interest, but he's he's going to make as much as he's got to pull out. Uh, and look, that that's a that's a calculated number every year that you get from your CPA or from our office. We'll let you know. But but yes, your plan works and uh, and is a good plan. And and a lot of people are doing that. And I just want to let you know, most likely you won't have to pull out much of that money uh, for the rest of his life. If that's enough for him to live off of, plus the other stuff you get going on. Yeah, and if it's a Roth, he's pulling it out tax free. Correct. That's right. If it's a Roth, then there's no taxes. Yeah. So the reason for that. 
some people might might not even know the difference between a Roth and just a regular IRA. So let them know the difference. Yeah. So so a Roth IRA and the, the difference between a traditional the traditional is it's it's when you pay taxes. And so if you're looking for a tax break or write off today or tax credit today, then you would want a traditional account. What does that mean? When you put in let's say seven thousand dollars, excuse me, in a traditional you get to take that $7,000 off your income and and not pay taxes on it. But now that $7,000 is going to grow for 10, 20, 30 years and it's going to turn into, you know, whatever, $200,000, a million dollars. And when you go to take that million dollars out, you have to pay taxes on the whole amount, all interest, $7,000 that you put in every single year and you have to tax on all of it. So that let's say that's a million dollars, you're going to owe, let's say, 30%. So you're going to have 700000 The difference of doing a Roth is you're paying taxes up front on, on the seed. It's what we call it up front. So no tax credit today. You'll pay the taxes on the $7,000 to the IRS as though you'd, you know, because you've made it. But now when you put it in a Roth, since you've already paid taxes on it, it grows tax-free and comes out uh, tax-free. And so uh, we talk about, you know, paying taxes on the, on the crop or on the seed. The seed is up front with the Roth. The crop is years later uh, when it's, you know, you got a big old million dollars. There's 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 advantages of, of both. But typically, especially if you've got a lot of time to grow it, if you can do a Roth, you should do a Roth. And we help you with that at Rise and Trust. If you're not sure which type of account is for you, do a call with us, schedule a call. We'll talk to you about it. There's a few other types of accounts as well that could be more beneficial to you. I'm glad you said that because... A lot of people, they think like the biggest benefit to a 401k is the the tax deferral. Some people don't understand the difference between a tax deferral and a tax deduction. Mm-hmm. So in a 401k, when there's a match, another thing that people just think is the most amazing thing since sliced bread in a 401k is that the employer will match up to a certain dollar amount. Let's say it's 2,500 bucks. That is a dollar for dollar deduction for the company, meaning that $2,500, they don't got to pay taxes on now or never. For you, it's a deferral. So you're not paying taxes now, like you said, on the seed. When you know what the taxes are, to pay them later on the, the crop, that's probably going to be a lot bigger, and you have no idea what taxes are going to be. They could be 60 70%. Who knows, right? Mm-hmm. That's right? I always think... and. I know everyone's situation is different. However, I'm a firm believer that pay your taxes now. Pay them now, never pay them again. Do a Roth, to your point. If you can do a Roth, do a Roth. It makes so much more sense because it'll grow tax-free. You won't have to pay taxes on the crop. You pay taxes now when you know what the tax rate is. You don't pay them in the future. That's right. It, it, It makes the most sense. If you can qualify, sometimes you can. Sometimes there's other types of accounts you've got to do. Uh, but we'll help you with that. That's not for you to make a decision on. We can help you with it with your CPA or tax professional. It's, it's pretty easy. That's what I like, too, is you guys walk everyone through that. Again, just know, guys, that Horizon is not going to tell you what to invest in. They're not going to do that. They're going to help you get everything over to the correct um, kind of account, whether it be a – do you guys do solo 401ks? Yeah, lots of those actually, lots of those. Yeah. Okay, so they'll help you do a solo four hundred one k, a Roth IRA, a self directed, a SEP, whatever it might be. They'll help you get it done correctly for your situation. They'll help you guys with the paperwork. They'll help you with the tax implications if you have any. But they're not going to tell you here. Invest with Devin Burr. <laughs> no, mm. lend him money on his deal because then you guys have to get like uh, SEC involved and all that stuff, right? Yeah, that would become a fiduciary, and, and we don't want to be responsible. Look, and that, a big thing of that, too, is because these are alternative assets, they're not they're, they're not regulated. Like, if I were to lend on a piece of real estate right next door to me, I know that deal really well. It's my neighbor. I got that. But it's not regulated. And so uh, we don't want to make a decision and tell you to invest in that deal, because what if you didn't, like, check the boxes and make sure that there's no other liens or if it's owned by the right person? That's not our job. And so that, that's also why this is not for everybody. Like if you're a financial advisor listening to this, you're like, man, these guys are not talking about the risk. I disagree. 
this is meant for the people that spend and care about their money and want to put a portion. That's the other thing. What we're talking about is you can leave a portion with your advisor and, and test this out. And this is not for most of America. Most of America is not going to spend time or energy to research their deals. This, if you're not going to look at your deals, read the contracts and, and, and do a little bit of homework, not for you. Uh, this is for those that are taking action that are you know educating themselves. These are this is for the people that are that want to be a, a good steward of their money. That's right, right? Like if if you are fine with just giving up control of your money to Wall Street and just hoping and praying that it's going to be enough for retirement, then this isn't for you. But if you are someone who's like, you know what? If I control the investment, I know that I can do better than what it's done before. Then yeah, this is definitely for you. You seem so pissed off when you say that. Yeah. If you're one of those guys, <laughs> you just don't care. <laughs> you're like, you're almost sad for them. I can feel it in you. <laughs> if that's who you are, but it's true though. Like that's that's but, but that's not who's listening here, which is which is the sad part. Like the, the people who are not listening are the ones that typically aren't even paying attention, right? That they think that they think that they're just paying one percent in fees in advisory on their money, and but there's there's different loads and debt. There's all kinds of other fees when investing in mutual funds and indexes. You're paying two, three, four percent a year, and 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 those expenses beat you up too. And so it's really about compounding. taking back control. They are compounding. So it's it's just your message so much resonates with our message about taking back, being the bank, controlling your money. Nobody cares more about money than you do. I don't. Yeah, Devin doesn't. You care most about your money. And I look. I remember my mom when she first, her and I first started talking about this stuff when I was in my early twenties. It was like. The only time she would get a call from her financial advisor was when he wanted to know if she wanted to invest more money. Yeah, like if right. if my if, if if advisors just started calling us, which which they won't do by the way, because I I know why they don't, and I'm not hating on them because I've got a couple of good ones that do some work with me, but they they and I do say but if they would call once in a while and be like, hey, dude, buy Apple today. Here's a great stock to buy or whatever it is, whatever the, whatever the tip is, I would appreciate that. Like, this is what you do for a living. G give me a couple of stock tips. Sure. We can go in some indexes and some, you know, mutual funds, but I, those are the calls that my mom never got, nor have any of my listeners got. They don't get the call like, Hey, by the way, let's try, let, let's buy this. Let's, let's try to make a little bit money on this segment or this, this company. It's it, the, the, the answer always is wait and hold just hypothetically if it does this oh it's down 10 percent, don't sell oh it's up 10 percent. it's going to keep doing it it's consistent wait and hold wait 10 years and i'm just telling you that methodology doesn't work anymore it's just like the banking methodology putting your money sitting at a bank it, it, it's it's the old program and it doesn't work so so yeah i i forget where i was reading this in the average 401k at retirement, so 59 and a half, um, is, and this is not the median, this is the average. So median is actually lower for anyone that knows the difference between median and average, like 300 grand. Mm -hmm. And the average income, household income, as of last year is 70,000 in the US. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me if I got 300 grand, I've been living off 70, this 300 grand ain't going to last. You know what I mean? But again, it's the people, like to your point, the people that just give their money and give their control over. It's not the people that are listening to this. I used to be one of them. Dude, I used to think a 401k is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I would max it out within like three months. I'd have like 40% of my checks going to it. And I thought I was being so smart. And then when I really learned how things worked, I was like, that was the stupidest thing I could have done with my money. But, dude, I love what you've done. You've built a freaking, you say, I think you're being a little uh, little modest when you say it's a boutique firm, but <laughs> you, you, you've built a machine, bro. You've been crushing it. Uh, uh, thank you. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, and, I, and I do catch myself saying a lot of things that used to piss me off when people would say this in my 20s. It was like, yeah, it's about time and about working with good people, but. Uh, but that is kind of, you know, I've worked hard and, and been beat up and hit and punched. And, and now I know who I want to work with and I get to pick and choose that. That's the greatest part about today. So thanks for having me. And just, I get to pick and choose my companies, pick and choose who we work with. 
And, and so that's who we want. We want people that are, that, that want to take action, that want to understand their money better. And, and that's who we want to work with. So that's, it's, it's fun. And I know you, I know you share that same, same message. So I like the fact that then you chose to to be on my podcast. I would have felt I would have felt bad if you're like, nah, I can't be on your pod, bro. Yeah, I, I've been, dude. I've been a fan of yours since I met you, man. And and lo- I feel like long before, uh, it, it, you know, it was the the big Mister Burr. And uh, and 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 what's cool about seeing you, I've seen from a distance, really, uh, your progress and how many lives you've changed and what you do. And you, but but you as a person your who you are hasn't changed and that's what's kind of what i resonate with is when people have success sometimes they're too cool or they're too whatever and they and and that hasn't like you you are a good person you are a family man and you just have a lot more knowledge now and you share it and you do it in a fun way i mean every you know, every once i'm like man if i could just make self-directing as sexy as devin makes uh banking that would be great and so uh, so I, I, it's been fun to watch you and, and now you help others. So thank you. I appreciate it, man. It's, uh, I think it's, um, it's kind of cliche, but the more money you have, it just amplifies who you are, right? If you're a dickhead with no money, yeah. you get a lot of money. You're going to be an even bigger dickhead, right? That's right. If you're super self-absorbed and you know, you've got a little bit of money, so you're paying your bills and everything. And then you're racking up your credit cards to go buy Gucci and Louis Vuitton and all this stuff. As soon as you get a little money, you're going to have a Lambo, <laughs> you know? Yep. A hundred percent. And no, house. I just, yeah, no house. <laughs> you live in an apartment, but everyone thinks you're balling, bro. You know, <laughs> got a Rolls Royce with like the stars in the headliner. Um, but yeah, man, it just amplifies who you are. Like we said at the beginning, it's a tool. The more you have of it. The more you can do, the more change you can make in people's lives, the more change you can make in your family's life. You can build a legacy that lasts. Um, So, guys, if this is all resonating with you, in the description of this video, we're going to have the link so you can set up a call with uh, with Greg's team against Horizon Trust. It's a free call. It's a consultation. They're just going to kind of find out what makes sense for you guys. And then if it makes sense... Get your retirement dollars over to a place where you can start dictating where they go and where they grow. Precious metals, real estate. Um, what can't they invest in? Look, the the things, the arts and collectibles. Uh, you can't invest in uh, life insurance policies like the one, like putting your money into an insurance policy. You can't. Uh, that would be freaking amazing if you could. Yeah, I know. Bro, I would. I would go crazy. Uh, I would go crazy with maybe. that. You, yeah, you can't yet. Uh, and then uh, you can't, you can't invest in like your own home and and you know it, that you live in or a vacation property. So the, those are probably the big ones. There's a few other little ones, but that's that's most of it. And we'll help you with that. We'll kind of guide you through. We have a whole learning kind of education process as you as you onboard. So can you not invest in like let's say I've got let's say I have a fund, the Mister Burr Fund. Can I not invest in that from my self-directed? You personally can't, no, because most likely you're going to take a fee or, or some kind of compensation or a split, uh, and you're going to be the one managing it. Uh, so, so no, I could. Anyone else could. Uh, you, your wife, your kids could not, and your father, your mother. That, those directions. It's it's a it's a vertical thing. Not horizontal. Some brothers, sisters could, in-laws, et cetera, could, but just not up and down. So, so, yeah. Got it. Okay. So that's good to know because I was I was thinking having my dad lend to me to go do real estate with, so I, that can't happen. No, but he can, but I know you've got a lot of real estate partners and stuff. Your dad could lend to a real estate partner so long that you're not a partner on that deal. Uh, and then look, in return, that partner could lend back to you uh, his or her money, you know? And so there's, there's, you know, I've got a lot of partners that will do that, that will do, they'll end up doing their own deal and then they'll have their business partner use their IRA to fund it or partner with it them on it. So yeah, but when it comes to family, there are, that, that is one of the prohibited um, transactions. Got it. Good to know. For, and, there, and there's good reasons for it. If you dive deep into it, it makes sense. Like, cause like if your dad missed a payment, let's say that, you know, or you missed a payment, hey, like he missed a payment to you or vice versa. There's a, usually a little bit of a grace period with uh, family. If it was your daughter, 
who, who you lent $100,000 to and had a 12% term and your daughter stopped making payments, probably not going to go collect. And and the purpose of a retirement account is to make I'm collecting. Well, I'm, coll I'm collecting. <laughs> about that. yeah. That's good. That's right. If you taught her right and she's paying and you're too like, anyways, yeah, that's it. <clears throat> so little tip, guys. Um, you guys know I do infinite banking like crazy. I've got 15 policies, which is just nuts when I stop and think about it. But um, three of them are on my daughter, my 16-year-old daughter. We used one to buy her her first car. So the car was 30000 bucks and some change. And we basically came up with the payment that she would have paid a bank. I think it was like 7% interest at the time. So she just takes that same payment and pays it back to her policy. So she's getting $446 bucks a month back into her policy, Right. If she misses a payment, I'm taking the fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> but but here's here's where the mindset is it, it shifts is like why would you ever miss a payment because that 446 bucks she's not losing control of it like we talked about That's all about right. control. That's right. That 446 goes back into a policy and builds up that she can use again and again and again and again. So why would you ever yeah. make a payment? Why would you ever miss a payment to yourself? doesn't make sense. It does make sense. And and you're most likely not going to when it's to yourself because it's it, it helps you. But that's the other nice thing though, right? I mean, I mean, you probably don't teach this. If you did have to miss a payment, unlike a bank, <laughs> uh, you're okay. And I think yeah, that's, that's kind of nice too, right? I mean, you missed a payment to the bank, you're getting blitzed. You missed two payments, they're coming to get Credit, a car. And, and, your credit's up. Gonna, and your credit's gone. In this scenario, if, if emergency did happen, that that does give some peace of mind, I feel like. So. 100%. Dude, do you remember, uh, I think it was maybe the second time that we met, we were in, uh, I think it might have been Utah. We were on a panel, me and you, we're sitting, you were to my left, and yeah. uh, we're talking about, we were talking about policies, and you had like, you had like an ungodly amount of cash value just sitting there, and I was like, dude, what the <laughs> hell is wrong with you? Did you did you deploy it immediately? After I, that? I deployed all of it. Uh, okay. and I've been and I've been turning it. I make payments like you just said. Uh, yeah, you know, I was. Uh, yes, I, that's like the first thing I did. I remember you looking at me you're like, "Hey, I'll pay eight percent on that money." I'm like, "No, I think I could do something a little better with that right now." <laughs> and so I've deployed it. I'm making payments back to it. They're all on auto pay, coming back every single month. I got like five different auto pays because I, I don't have as many as you have like eight policies i think or nine but they yeah i i use it now all you know every month have to because guys if if you have a policy with with me and my team or you don't and you're thinking about one you put money into a policy that money is guaranteed to grow whether you use it or not so if it just sits there it's growing if you use it it's growing so why wouldn't you let it grow use it and grow it somewhere else at the same time like when me and you had that conversation, I was like, bro, I use that money. What you got to use that? Yeah. <laughs> Too funny, man. That was already like, what, three years ago, four years ago? Yeah, it's probably like three or four years ago. Yeah. Time flies, it's dude. Been... I'm about to be 40, which is nuts. It only gets better. Yeah. That's what I'm, that's what I'm, I'm just, I'm serious. I'm passionate. Life is really good, man. <laughs> you know, you know, you, you know, I will say this, this circle kind of comes smaller as far as your, the, the friend group, at least for me, because it's like you do realize you only have so much time and how valuable your time is. So it kind of, it, and it's, it's, it's a nice thing, but the circuit kind of closes up a little bit and uh, you're able to live more of your why. And, and uh, you know, I know you got, you've already been traveling a ton these last few years and there's a lot more of that to come. So. Can't do it with the baby right now. She got to get a little older, but. Uh... Yeah, it's a little, it's a little harder. Those European Build trips, the European trips with a little infant that I don't even want to think about it, but, um, yeah, man. So it, I, I'm just blessed to have someone like you in my life, just a, a stud. You crush it in business, just an awesome dude all around. And I appreciate you being on the show. Um, like I said, guys, if you, if you feel like you can get value from having more control over your retirement, check out the description in this video to get a link to set up that call. But let's leave people with like one last thing. What would you just, if you could just tell them one thing, maybe like your 18 year old self, if you could go back and talk to that guy, that knucklehead, what would you mm -hmm. tell him? Uh, I would say 
there's no don't create a uh, option or plan B. Uh, only an option A. Uh, and I think that's where people fail often in their plan A is they have a business plan, they have goals. And then they're like, well, I'm going to start this other thing though or add it just in case A doesn't work. And I think the more driven you are and focused on your option plan A and there's no option for B, I I wouldn't go back and tell my, I, I feel like I played it really well, not by design, but I, I only had one option. I, I had to succeed. And what I see as some of the people's biggest failures is they've got multiple streams of income because it's sexy to say. And mm-hmm. and if this doesn't work, this does. You focus on on what you know best and you go deep in that, you're going to make all kinds of money and be able to save all kinds of money. Such a powerful tip, guys. It's funny you actually say that because I was at a Ryan Pineda's event last weekend. Yeah. And... um. Uh, it's, it's geared more for, towards a, a newbie. Let's put it that way. Yep. So I had like my Mr. Burr shirt on and some guy comes up, he's like, Oh, the Burr method. Like what's, what's, what's Mr. Burr? And I'm like, it's my name. <laughs> oh, I'm actually Devin Burr, Mr. Burr. He's like, Oh, do you do the method? I'm like, yeah. So then we just start talking. He's like, so how would I become successful? He hadn't done any deals. And I'm like, dude, figure out one thing, get super good, become like an expert at that one thing. And then systematize it to where you can step away from it, then get really good at another thing. Systematize that, step away from it. That's when you should have multiple streams of income. People get them too early and they're not good at any of these things, right? Yep. Like get get really freaking good at one thing, make it to where you can fully step away and it runs on its own and then build something else. You know how to systematize that, do the same thing with the second thing. And the third thing and the fourth thing. So, dude, I love that advice. Um, man, it'd be cool if we knew this stuff when we were young, right? Oh, man, it would. <laughs> but now we get to teach it to our, our young ones. So that's that's what's fun. 100%. Well, dude, it's been a pleasure. Guys, um, this has been fun. If you guys got value from this, I know you did. Make sure to share the episode with everyone you know because – The more we all grow, like a rising tide lifts all boats. So share the video, pay it forward. Um, Also comment like your biggest takeaway. Um, Follow Greg on all of the platforms. Where can they follow you at? Just Instagram is probably best. Just my name, just Greg Erlene. Just find me there and then follow there. I'm always doing some fun little videos, trying to keep up a little bit. Devin, impossible, I know. But uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm I'm giving out tips and uh, family stuff as well. So it's fun. Original name, at Greg Herlean. All right. That's it. Guys, it's been fun. Till next time, I love y'all. Peace.